Hi, and welcome to the Kaplan Connect. I'm your host, Fire Chief Scott Freitag. With me today, Tech Services Manager, Jonah Van Tile, former producer of the Kaplan Connect. Welcome. Thank you. So, it's good uh, to be back. It, I, it's good to have you here, especially to see you mess with Kathy. But what we're actually here for today is that you are hiring, or we are hiring. We are. And I always called them radio techs, even though I saw them as engineers. Um, so tell everybody, what are we hiring for? Well, we are hiring a telecommunications technician. Okay. And uh, currently, we have two telecommunications specialists. Again, that's the title is synonymous with the telecommunications engineer. And we're looking for another person to come up uh, to help fill in some of the gaps that we're experiencing just with the amount of the workload that we have right. and can help them uh, with the various projects and tasks that we have, as well as to build into the future, because there's just a lot of room for growth. This particular um, pathway in t technical services, um, we are over our heads. There's just so much to do. Right. And the the... The asks just keep coming. I mean, there's always yeah. something else to do. So. Well, and and Tony and Dave are invaluable. The the uh, knowledge and expertise they bring to the table is not something that you just replace. It is not. It, it has to be built. So this is really a great opportunity for someone looking to come into an organization and really look to the future at what they can accomplish. Because from my perspective, it looks limitless. It really is. You know, when you start talking about Tony and Dave um, – the only, you know, it's analogous to like an NBA super team. You right. know, you've got one superstar, and that's how it was my whole childhood. Like, it was pretty much like one superstar, and then he had some other people around them right. that were good, but not superstar level. And then all of a sudden, these super, you know, super teams start popping up, and they've got multiple superstars. And that's that's tech services uh, on right. the telecommunication side, is we've got a couple of superstars in there. And, and what they've been able to pull off is absolutely miraculous. And so um, they desperately need the ability to not be inundated with right. so much work that they can't think. So we want to bring in someone else to not just get the opportunity to do the job, but to learn from them, to learn the way that they do things um, and to be able to grow into the position. And then eventually when they retire, which is, I mean, it's going to happen that we have new people that are in that position that mm -hmm. are tried and tested and have the right training. So. so what are some of the things that that Tony and Dave do that people wouldn't think about? I mean, they think telecommunications, the, the telephones, uh, handheld radios, mobile units in the vehicles, but what your crew does is so much more than yeah. that uh, for our, not just our agency, but right. for Yavapai County Sheriff, for Prescott Valley PD, uh, assisting Cottonwood on occasion, assisting the PRCC Prescott. Um, I mean, the, the, the number of, of areas of expertise they have are just amazing. So give us some idea of what are some of the specific tasks? So as, as Dave would say, um, your capability all depends on your network. That's where it all starts. Mm -hmm. So one of the, the biggest pieces of in the, in the telecommunication side is managing our infrastructure, and that is tower sites, microwave links between those tower sites, uh, power for those tower sites, ensuring, ensuring that we have proper battery backups, um, ensuring that our solar power is working um, on, on specific sites, mm -hmm. um, making sure that the transport between all those is is not just operational, but functioning at a high, uh, at a high level. Um, then once you kind of move past the infrastructure side, it moves more into like the, the network, the network side. So, um, how, what type of equipment are we using to kind of bring that all together? Sure. And then from there, you do start talking about the radio side. So you're talking about, um, VHF radios, UHF radios, subscriber units, whether it's a portable radio or a mobile radio, um, as you as you mentioned, we support not just CAFMA, but all of Yavapai County, um, the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office, all of their communications we support, as well as their dispatch center, right? Uh, the console side of their dispatch center. Um, they also we also manage all the Prescott Valley Police Department's uh, radio systems, as well as some other um, some other uh, smaller pieces for them. And then, pretty much every other, besides the city of Prescott, right. Any of the other smaller fire districts around here rely us on, on us at some le level. Well, that's Williamson Valley slash Mayor now. Right. Um, Groom Creek, Walker. Um, we get requests from uh, the court system, d juvenile probation, right. anyone. Like they're always calling us. Hey, can you can you help? Can you help? Um, 
And unfortunately, we have to say no at certain points because we just don't have the right. bandwidth to do it. And and uh, my guys need a life outside of yeah. their day job. Well, so. and your, your guys built out the comm systems for the juvenile justice or new, the, the new, new justice, justice center. center. In fact, that's where they will be today is they, 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 didn't, they engineered the entire system um, and worked uh, hand in hand with the Avapai County uh, uh, Sheriff's Office as well as the manufacturer of the of the hardware to put it all together. And they've been spending the last right. few weeks putting it in. So. so there's a couple of things I'd like to highlight in the division just to kind of give people a sense of what your folks do and, and what, uh, you know, especially for the lay public who may not know or someone who's interested in getting into this type of, of career mm-hmm. field. So number one, in the fire service, they have what's called quiet alerting, which is typically about $10,000 per mm-hmm. station to buy it on the open market. I think it'd be significantly more than that, but that's it was oh ten thousand yeah. years ago. Now it's closer to twenty twenty five. Yeah. Um, but your techs invented or designed their own quiet yeah. alerting system that was deployed in our stations for a thousand apiece. Yeah. Yeah. So they they uh, engineered a solution um, that works hand in hand with uh, some, some out of the box uh, uh, capabilities of Motorola radios and. Uh, yeah, it, it, it works. It lights up the station. Uh, it, it brings up the volume using what they call a heart saver tone. So guys don't, you know, wake up, you know, screaming because right. all of a sudden there's a speaker blasting at them. Volume controls and that kind of stuff. And and they developed that in a, at a time when there was nothing. Right. right. So um, they were using beepers and and portable radios. And, and so um, it's been an amazing success. Again, we've built those for other agencies. Um, that have requested them, Williamson Valley Fire, uh, Groom Creek Fire, right. um, and but we're looking to the future. You know, we right. know that we know that um, a, a digital station alerting is is kind of, of the wave of the future and where things need to go. So right. we are paying attention to that, and we want to we want to move in a in a direction to take the agency uh, in a direction. And that's the thing about this our division is that while we're we're kind of small, we really do um, help drive the direction that the agency is going from a technology standpoint. Absolutely. And uh, this position just gets, it's an opportunity to come in and work with a team right. that is fantastic. We have a great team. We have um, a ton of opportunities. You get a lot of support mm-hmm. and um, basically the sky's the limit. I mean, you, you really could come in and, and if you maybe you've been doing it for the Forest Service mm-hmm. or you've been working with DPS and you feel maybe siloed into a, a, a small corner where you only get to deal with one piece of right. technology. This position is, it's wide open. You get you get tons right. of exposure in in the office, out in the field. Um, no two days are ever the same. So. Well, and if you've been working in the military as well, whether yeah. you're a reservist or full-time, if you're one of those radio folks for the military that makes communications happen where no communications exist, yeah. that's what this yeah. does. And so an, another thing I want to highlight relates to Prescott Valley PD. Before uh, we took over their systems, you took over their systems, police officers would have to change frequency, change the channel they're on, depending on what side of the community they were in, which is a significant safety issue. And once we took that over, uh, Dave and Tony were able to engineer a system that today, uh, what I hear from Prescott Valley PD is it's the best they've ever had in communications. And there's no longer these spots where you have to change channels yeah. and there's no dead zones. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a mm-hmm. huge, that was a huge feat that was done in a relatively short time. And it, again, the big part of that is because we had the, Dave and Tony had already built out the infrastructure, right? right? So we were able to utilize existing infrastructure, um, take some of Prescott Valley's components, buy some new components. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they, you know, miraculous in a, just a matter of months brought Prescott Valley up to a, a level that they probably never thought they would be able to. And and also that only worked on one of their channels. Mm-hmm. The other channel was only had only had one site, right? So right. now they have two channels that doesn't matter where they are mm-hmm. uh, in the Prescott Valley area. They have um, a radio system that is built so that not their, just their mobile radios, but mm-hmm. their portables have, they can talk clearly on them wherever they are in Prescott Valley, which right. is the most important thing. You know, when they, when Dave and Tony design a system, they design it to work from the portable radio, right. which is a much lower powered radio, right? So if you build it to work from the radio in the vehicle, right? I mean, anyone can do that. But then when you go to use a portable radio, it's not work. It doesn't work, right? So, so the the other one I wanted to highlight because I highlight this every time I'm out, and 
your team just did such an amazing job on this. But it's the, when uh, after a snowstorm on top of the mountain, when one of the communication site for Yavapai County Sheriff went out and um, there was a helicopter involved and a hot insert. And, yeah. you know, at the end of it, three hours from the time someone noticed the, the communications equipment was down until it was back up again. Yeah, it was. I mean, from the time that Dave took off from the parking lot at uh at our training center. Took off in a helicopter. And a helicopter. Well, after he got trained how to not chop his head off jumping out of the helicopter. Perfect. Um, he, uh, which was actually flown by, I believe, um, the deputy sheriff or one of, one of the... One of the sheriff's deputies, the sheriff. I think. No, it was one of the higher up guys with, okay. the, with the sheriff's office. Um, you know, in less than 40 minutes from the time that he took off till the time that the system was up and running. It was about three hours from the time that it was right. reported. But it would have taken us three to five hours to get up there in our snowcat if he wouldn't even have made it to the top. There's three feet of snow at the top of Spruce right. Mountain that day. So, yeah, they, you know, that was an awesome, awesome uh, win for us. And, and you know, still, you know, we talk to Dave about it all the time still. Yeah. Dave Dave really, uh, he loves that stuff. So, so, But you're not required to jump out of the helicopter for this position. I just want to make that clear. if you join us, if there's you, potential there's that potential, you could if you yes, want to. If you had the opportunity, absolutely. There, there, yeah. There's a lot of potential there. So um, when we look at the starting salary range, depending on qualifications, what's listed on the flyer right now? Um, right now, I think it's uh, around 54000 to 73000 is what we're listing depending that's on the, experience. That's the starting range depending that's on a, experience. That's the starting range depending on experience. Okay. There's lots of room to grow past that. Got it. Um, but based on where we're going to be hiring someone, that's kind of where um, they can come in at. Um, we're just encouraging people to apply and uh, and we'll see what happens. If, if, uh, if we don't find a person, then we'll have to kind of rethink how we're approaching this. But Do it um, again. We'll do it again. But we we really we really need somebody, and uh, we're excited to um, to see what kind of applicants we get. Now I may be biased, but I don't think there's another tech services division that measures up to ours on on the IT side and on the the telecommunications. I'm not going to argue with you. That, that's my opinion. I, I'm not going to argue with you. I, I would say between so in tech services we've got the telecommunications pathway, uh, inform, information technology, and uh, GIS. And all three of those pathways have excellent people. Absolutely. They, just, they are the top of their field. Um, the work that they do is, is second to none. Yep. So. Well, Jonah, thanks for coming on to talk about this position. Um, it's very exciting to get somebody in. And yep. I think for anyone who's listening, viewing, or sending this uh, this podcast out to someone else who might be interested in working here, um, if, if you have any interest at all, take a look at our website, take a look at the flyer. A lot of opportunity here for the future. Again, Jonah, thanks for coming on. Kathy, thank you for being here. I was going to ask you a telecommunications question, but we're on a time crunch. So, No, I really do want to say something. Though. Okay. Oh, I'm wow. such a big fan of the, our team. I have never had a bad interaction. You guys have always had the best attitudes, and I have called about some ridiculous <laughs> stuff. Don't yeah. laugh. <laughs> I said I've had good interactions. <laughs> but, yeah, just the best team, and I, yeah. I th I'm excited to see who you get. Yeah. So I'm excited too. with that, thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.